Thanks, Thanks Lord. Uh, please deposit all your tithes and offerings in the metal boxes at the sanctuary doors. Those of you that are first-time visitors, please be sure and stop by the Welcome Center and pick up a packet. Fill out a card and you'll receive a free gift. Also, tonight's service is canceled, correct? There's no choir practice, there's no service, so you can stay home and be safe and warm in your home. Uh, Tuesday at 9 a.m. is the senior breakfast. This Friday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is open gym night. And then Saturday at 11 a.m. is the ladies' ministry meeting. Also, this coming Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., the ch there's going to be a church skate party at Dixie Skateland. And everyone is welcome to come. And please use the back of the bulletin to invite a friend. There's a, a place on the back that you can clip it out and hand it over to somebody. And so be sure and pick up a bulletin on your way out because these and other announcements are there. Also, um, we're going to be ordering some T-shirts for the church. They're red with white lettering. They're going to have the church logo, address, and website on them. And there's a table set out in the foyer uh, where they're taking orders, and it depends on how many orders we get as to the cost of the T-shirts, but it looks like um, they're going to run somewhere around 10 give or take a few dollars each. It also depends on size that we order, So, but volume is a big factor in the final cost, so be sure and do that. I think they're going to take orders for about three weeks, so be sure and stop out and do that, and thank you very much. Let's turn to page 181, Blessed Assured. <laughs>
pleasantly surprised that all of you made it this morning. I know it's kind of treacherous out that way. and I'm sure the Lord will give you a safe journey back home. And because of the weather, they're predicting more freezing rain. We're going to cancel tonight. But in our hearts uh, is where we worship anyway. So throughout the day, this being the Lord's day, let's give him the worship that's due to his name. We are so pleased, and I'm going to have more to say about Andy being with us this morning to preach for us. Uh, I'll have more to say about that in a little bit. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I've always said this, and I truly believe this. The greatest privilege that a child of God has is to talk to the Master. And no matter what, there's never a busy signal. There's never a text that can't get through. God always hears and always listens. You're here today without Jesus. You listen. Because I'm confident he'll speak to your heart. And when he does, no greater voice will you ever hear. Now you won't hear him with audible ears. But you'll hear him in your spirit. If you'll respond to him. Greatest thing you'll ever do in your life. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for those that have made their way out. May a special blessing be theirs today. And I know that there's folks that couldn't come. I know you understand that. We've got some that are bereaved, that are away from us, that are traveling. Would you watch over them, Lord? And would you just, in a very special way today, touch your messenger. As he stands with your word today, may it be a glorious experience for him. And may it lift up Jesus, for Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I brought all men unto me. Continue in our singing, may your blessings rest there. And in all we do or say, we want to magnify the precious name of Jesus in his name.
that I am not one to sing in front of people myself. I love singing, but not by myself. But Andy asked me to sing the song before he came to preach. So I, of course, as a good wife-to-be, said yes. Um, <laughs> um, in all seriousness, though, I do want you to listen to the words of this song because it, it's about... It's about, you really never know what the person next to you is going through. And it's not so much, a lot of times we think when we go through a trial, God, take this away from me. Um, I, don't, I, want, I don't want to go through this. Um, please help me to avoid this. But it's not about getting out of a trial. It's about going through it with God. It's about having him hold your hand every step of the way. Because everything that God does is for a purpose, even if we do not yet see it. So, please listen to the words. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. But right now, right now I'm losing bad. I've stood on this stage night after night reminding the broken it'll be all right but right now oh right now I just can't it's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down but what will I sing when I'm held to the flames like I am right now. I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. They say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. God, will you choose to leave mountains unmovable? Lord, give me the strength to be able to sing it as well with my soul cause I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand but even if you don't my hope is you alone and I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the words. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Because it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well. precious. Boy, I hope it's well with your soul. We're so privileged this morning in a number of ways, but I don't want to put any added pressure on Andy, but it wasn't long ago that he announced his calling to the ministry, and it is a calling. It is not something that mommy wants for children, even though that's a good want. But in a, in a man's heart, in a man's spirit, when he senses God Almighty saying to him, I want you to preach my gospel. It's the greatest calling a man's ever had. 
And this is Andy's first time standing to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am so confident in my prayer time about this. I've just felt so good. And, and, and if I could have, I would have sent you my cassette of me my first time. And you would have felt super good. Because I, I didn't do so well. But I'll tell you just how good a preacher preaches is as good as you pray. So if you'll pray for him this morning, lift him up. And he'll lift Jesus up. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, women, boys, and girls to me. Andy Smith, would you come? Preach to us whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Bless you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, morning. <laughs> I really do would appreciate your prayers. Um, and so I'll just open up in prayer. That's the only way I know how to do that. Lord, today, Lord, will you just get Andy Smith out of the way and just let be your messenger, God. Let me preach the way that you want me to preach and just thank you for everything that you've done in my life and everything that you're going to do in my life and all of these people's lives. Just please bless them, Lord, as they travel, and Lord, just please let your word go forth today. In his name, amen. So we are going to um, turn our Bibles. We're going to be in Romans 8. This is really low. Can't. <laughs> the perks of a, well, I guess not the perks. The perk of being tall is you can just like pop it up there, but I don't know. Well, we'll just start reading because the Lord's got better stuff to say than me. So Romans 8, I'm going to start in verse 26. I guess y'all can stand if, that, if y'all want, feel inclined. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of a son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather he who was raised at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long, for we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we, are, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created things will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, thus saith the Lord. I didn't expect that one. <sighs> Many of you guys don't know me, you know of me through Caitlin. My parents were missionaries in Senegal, West Africa. I went over when I was two. So I grew up there. We would furlough every four years or so in Georgia. And so... When I was really young, my father was asked um, to step in and lead the, their team on the field as director. I have to understand that 
the time, this position wasn't, it wasn't set up very well. So that every director before him had gone into depression and had left the field, and some had even left missions. So this was not a light thing that the Lord asked him to do. And he did it anyways, and like his predecessors, he also fell into depression. I was young at the time, so I don't remember that much. Um, but he struggled through the five years of the term as director. The majority of those, he was in depression. And then after that, we came back to the States, and he was still struggling with it and getting over it. And this is the testimony that he gives, and as being part of the family, this is also mine. He learned two things, two things during his time in depression. One, he learned that God is completely and totally sovereign. Nothing happens that he's not in control of. But when you're in the depths, this truth will destroy you if you do not know the second truth he learned, that God is completely and totally good. A lot of times when you're going through something and people will come and quote Romans 8, 28, oh, you know, all things work together for good. You just want to slap them. Because how? When you're in the depths, the devil loves to close around you and not let you see that everyone is going through things. He doesn't want you to see the grand picture. And what is the grand picture? It goes on to say, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. Those are called according to his purpose. We are called. If you are saved, what is your calling? God, the good that it talks about. God is transforming you to be more Christ-like. That is the good that he's going through. It's everything you go through, God is completely in control of. Job. Job had so much wealth and he was so faithful to God. The devil came to God and said, hey, can I mess this guy up? Because he's only following you because he's got stuff. And God said, yeah, sure, go ahead. He's not going to, he's not going to, he's still going to follow me. And so then the devil, the God allowed the devil to take everything. And Job was still faithful. And then the devil was like, can I mess up his health? God said, you can do anything, but do not take his life. God was in control. And Job remained faithful. So my dad then went, when he got out of depression, we were in the States for a couple years, and we didn't know if we were going to go back to the mission field. Um, we, because every director had not, they had all left the field. But then we felt called to go back, so we went back. And then my dad was finally doing the ministry that, got, that, he, that he loved. He had been doing ministry before, and he loved it, but this was like, his favorite, like if he could have chosen any ministry to do in Senegal, it would have been this. He was going out to villages and teaching and doing developmental work. And he just loved it. It was a blast. He was, it, the Lord was using it. It was incredible. And then he got sick, and we didn't know why. They diagnosed him with having chronic fatigue syndrome, which in layman's terms means, I don't know, we don't know. You're just tired all the time. You're hurt. We don't really know what. It's not this, 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 so it's all like that. And now, you guys have to understand, my father, he was like the superman. He was the superman dad. He would try to do it all himself. When we would go overseas, he would literally pack all of our bags for us. He'd just say, bring me the stuff and I'll pack it. And then he would load it all himself. Like, he'd try to do everything. And he could, and he did. And then... He got sick, and he went from being able to do everything to when we came back for the last time, came back to the States, he went through the airport in a wheelchair because walking was too painful. Now, in a sense, what happened was with our family in this whole thing is God... My dad went through depression, and God gave those truths, revealed those truths to him. 
And so then we, and then I just heard it every time. We would go to another church. He would explain his testimony and give it. And then he got sick again. And then I was like, why? And then I was like, oh, yeah. The truths. God's in control. But it's so hard. It's so hard. But just go back to the Bible. We know that God causes all things to work together for good. For those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of a son. So that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. God will just go on again. To, we'll go to, back to verse 35. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? And you, whatever trial you go through, what can separate you from the love of Christ? And then it just lists off, will tribulation, will distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or the sword? Or death, it goes on to say, for your sake, we, being put to death all day long, we're considered a sheep to be slaughtered. But in all things, we, are overwhelmingly, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced, this is Paul, but I agree with him, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God. God has us. And just for example, if I, had, as I was holding that box of tissues, I asked like Cameron to come up and take it from me. He would because he's stronger. He could. God has us. The devil wants to take us from us. So if you try to take something from someone, the stronger will win. God is stronger. The devil cannot take us. I'm just beating the same horse. I'm just, better just wrap up here. But the point is, I just can't preach better than the word. Who will, se who will separate us? From the love of Christ. Anything you name, he's basically, he's named it. Nothing can separate you from God. Why then do it, does it seem like we try to separate ourselves? Why then do we not, God gave us everything. We should also then give everything. I'm preaching to myself because I am fallen. Everyone is fallen. If nothing can take us away from God, then I want to say something. I get me in trouble, Larry. <laughs> then why aren't we paying him as much attention as we should? I'm preaching to myself because I do this all the time. I don't read my Bible as much or pray as much, but I know that I should because God gave me everything. I need to give him everything. <sighs> Go back to verse 34. Now, nothing can take us away from God, but you have to give yourself to God first. God created us. He created everything. He loves us so much. He loves us so much that he gave us a choice. He gave the first humans, Adam and Eve, a choice. Free will. You know, there's a saying, if you love something, let it go. Well, in a sense, you're giving that thing free will. God gave... The first humans, Adam and Eve, a choice. And Adam fell. They chose themselves and sin over God. And because we are their descendants, that has passed down to us. But we are also given a choice. We can choose God, or we can choose the world and ourselves. And it, it's not me, I'm not, 
preachers aren't the ones going up and saying, oh, you're bad, oh, you're bad, oh, you're bad. God says, the standard is Christ. Verse 33, who will bring a charge against God's elect? Let God's the one who justified. Who is the one who condemns? So who condemns? Christ Jesus. Is he who died? Yes, rather he who is raised and sits at the right hand of God interceding for us. In Acts, um, the Sermon on Mars Hill, Paul went to Athens. He was on a missionary trip. And he went to where the philosophers of the day would debate ideas. And he preached there. But if you look, he never once says Christ Jesus and never once really says that... um, Let me just turn there real quick. He doesn't say that, like how we say, oh, you have to accept him and then you'll go to heaven. He preaches and says... Let's find it real quick. Okay, um, I'm in Acts 17... Starting 30. Therefore, this is Paul speaking on Mars Hill. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to all men that all people everywhere should repent because he has fixed a day on the world which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed. This is Christ, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. As is close to Paul, God is saying that Christ died for your sins. And he is saying that the standard that everyone will be judged against when they die is Christ. So we have a choice today. Do we choose God or do we choose ourselves? If you choose God, God will never let you go. Through everything, he will have you. We have to make that choice. Larry, Larry, come on. I'm done. That reminds me a little bit about me. When I was done, I was done. Stand, would you? Now, even though this was Andy's first time to preach, that's novel. But the most important thing was what he said. And what he really said was, if you have Jesus Christ in your life, he'll take a hold of you, and nothing, absolutely positively nothing, can separate you from him. You can't even separate you from him. That's called eternal salvation. And without salvation, if this Bible is correct, you cannot go to heaven. And I suspect if we took a poll here this morning and we said, how many of us want to go to heaven? Everybody that's got right mind would say, yes, I want to go. But just wanting to go doesn't get you there. What gets you there is to have heard what a preacher's preached and the Holy Spirit take it to your heart and to say to you, I'm talking directly to you now. And when you sense that God's speaking directly to you, that's called conviction. And the word convict means to convince. And through this message today, I'm satisfied God is attempting to convince people of your need for Jesus Christ. And if you want the security that Andy's preached about, being in the hand of God, and the sovereignty of God means that God can do anything, anytime, any place, anywhere he wants to do. And he doesn't have to consult me, you, or anyone else to do it. And so a long, long time ago, God's sovereignty said, I'll send Christ. But if you'll believe that I sent him, that he died for your sin, you have life everlasting. Bow your heads with me, would you please? Couldn't have heard a better message this morning. A 
message of hope, a message of peace, a message of encouragement. Now, if you don't know me well, let me just tell you a couple of things about me. I'm going to ask for you to make a, an acknowledgement here in just a moment. But my promise to you is this. I will not point you out. I will not put you on the spot. I won't come to you after service is over. I won't try to persuade you. I'm simply asking for an open and an honest response to the gospel that you've heard here tonight. So let me ask you this. Who in this place today would say, and, and, and you probably would have to say like all the rest of us, I don't understand all the scripture. Folks, I've been preaching almost 40 years and I don't understand it all. But what he's preached to you this morning is the gospel truth. And so let me ask you this today. How many of you would be totally honest today with me and the Lord? We're the only two looking on. And you've heard my promises to you. You'd be totally honest and look at me and say by that look, I don't have what this preacher's preached about today. I don't understand about not being separated from the love of God. But at least I've got an interest, preacher. Would you look my direction if that's your case today? That won't save you. But I'll tell you what will is, is your desire to be saved. Would you just look my direction, anybody at all? You look this way and say by that gesture, pray for me. Pray for me. Bless you. Now you can lift your heads. And we're going to sing a song. We call it an invitation song. An invitation means come to my house. And Jesus is saying just that this morning. Come to my house. Come live with me when this life is over. But until then, I'll come live with you in the person of the Holy Spirit. So while we sing a verse, if you desire to pray, you invite Christ into your heart, or perhaps you're already saved, and perhaps you're struggling with something. Perhaps you don't understand a lot of things. What he preached, what he started with, God's got us. Would you come? Would you trust him? God put on your heart today. If God's put it on your heart, it'll work. Caitlin, come join him, would you? These two are going to be married not too long down the road. And uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. wasn't this precious what took place here today? I remember that you could be held in one hand. <laughs> I'm not going to say much more about that because I plan to say some of that at your wedding. <laughs> but the greatest hand that the two of you could ever be held in is the hand of the Lord. Amen. And your lives are committed to him. And we're honored that you've come home and that God's al allowed you to preach his precious word. There'll be ups, there'll be downs, 
There'll be ins and there'll be outs. But one thing about the Lord, he never changes. And so in his loving and protective hand, I'm quite certain the Lord will do great and marvelous things in your lives. It's untelling what God's got in store for you. Just be open. Follow him wherever he leads. Just be like Abraham. Abraham, come, follow me. And if you'll follow him, God will open doors that you didn't dream were possible. We're so proud of you, so proud of you. What a precious message. Boy, you outdid me out my first one for sure. In fact, you've outdone a lot of mine. <laughs> and you know, sometimes I had a preacher friend of mine. He said, every message I preach, I go home. And I ask myself, Lord, I, I, I could have said this, I could have said that, I could have said this, I could have said that. When you follow the Holy Spirit, you just say exactly what he wants you to say. And that's the important thing. And as you grow, and what we need to do is to get under this precious couple and pray for them. Amen. That whatever doors God opens for them, uh, they'll be willing to walk through those. And I'm quite certain they will. Uh, I have great expectations. And I, I'm just... Well, I'm still you, Pastor. I don't care what Mike Rain says. <laughs> and uh, I've got great expectations. I, it, it would amaze us, I believe, if we could know what God has in store, not just for them, but for you. That's right. God's got some things in store for some of you. You just keep putting yourself under the sound of the gospel. And as the Lord speaks to your heart and touches your heart, you just be willing to do like Abraham. Just leave it all behind and, and take a step for Jesus. And if you'll do that, God will bless you. Tom, could you get us a song? You and Marty, come by and shake hands with these folks. Uh, hug next. If you got a cold, do an elbow bump with them. Uh, and uh, just be thankful and pray for them. They're traveling back home today. So pray for them, would you?
my sinful soul on fire when God 